Las Vegas. So the finals are in Vegas next week. You know what they say about Vegas. Do you know what they say about Vegas? What happens in Vegas stays in... You never heard that one? You don't get out much, do you? Welcome back, everyone. J-Bone here for Smash This Podcast. Going to talk some May Young Classic. Man, um, <laughs> this this has been crazy. This has been some crazy, cr- crazy bunch of women's wrestling I've been watching on here. Um, just got done watching round two, the quarterfinals and the semifinals. That's episode episodes five, six, seven, and eight. These these women, wow, they they are. <laughs> if if you're not satisfied with the women's wrestling in the WWE currently, I implore you, I encourage you, I advise you to go watch the Mae Young Classic because I have a feeling. We're going to be seeing a bunch of these women staying in the WWE in the soon to very near future, okay? I know that some of these women do have WWE contracts. They're down in NXT in Florida. I'm not sure which ones. I have a feeling which ones. But, um, man, this has been an absolute blast to watch. I've tried to get some of my friends to watch it, and they just, they're not sold on it, and I don't get it. And that's not knocking my friends. Just, I, 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 and I'm not saying I love wrestling more than them. It's just, this is something you really should watch if you're a wrestling fan, okay? I can't express that strongly enough. Well, let's get into some of this. Um, Episode 5, and I'm not going to review every single detail of every single match like I said in my last review, so if you're looking for that, you're in the wrong place. I'm going to talk about some highlights, what stood out to me, what wowed me, you know. Um, Episode 5 is where things really started getting going between five and six in the uh, the round two in the, um, of the Mae Young Classic. We saw Rachel Evers face Abby Lath. That was probably my favorite match of episode five. That was a lot of fun. And, and this is one of those where, like, you know, I'm glad I didn't fill out a bracket on this stuff because I would have been so wrong. You know, and I really didn't, I I didn't root for anyone in particular. I just enjoyed the matches. Um, I really enjoyed watching Piper Devin um, wrestle Serena Deeb. It was, it was bittersweet because I was really excited to see Serena Deeb again in the WWE, but I also wanted to see Piper Piper Niven go on to um, the next round. So I, you know, in the back of my head, I'm rooting for both of them, even though I know one of them's gonna gonna win and someone's gonna lose. Piper went on to the next round in that one. Uh, Mercedes Martinez facing uh, Princessa Suhey. That was uh, another good one as well. But Princess Suhey... Certainly not in the size advantage anywhere in this tournament, and just was amazing to watch. Uh, Kari Sane versus uh, Bianca uh, Belair. That's about the first time we saw, like, we saw a lot of emotion out of the crowd, but as far as like, like wow, like, like heel. In, like heel heat, I'll say was was a, was in this match watching Bianca Belair use her hair 
as a weapon, which was... I don't think we've ever seen anything like that before. How she uses it like as a whip, and how she used it against uh, Kari Sane, which Kari Sane won. But wow, it, it, this it has sounded like this was Bianca Belair's second match. I mean, she was. Is she? Had, how do I say this? I see a ton of potential in her. Okay. She she was impressive for a second match ever and facing Kari Sane. That was ridiculous. It was it was it was better than I thought it was gonna be. The the hair thing threw off a lot of people, including me. I was I was surprised. I I mean I know it's part of who she is, the long hair, the braid, the whipping it around and everything. But I'm not sure how how well it's going to be taken in the future. If she's going to if these if they're going to use that, if she uses that as like a, a heel tool, you know, to to get over with the crowd as a heel, I don't know. It's hard to say, but nonetheless, um that was a good match as well. And that elbow. That elbow from Kari Sane is crazy. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. That wraps up that one. Episode 6, Tony Storm versus Lacey Evans. Um, Tony Storm, certainly one of my favorites in here. I get so, like, fired up when I see her. She has so much charisma. And her, her her entrance music, that's part of it, too. Um, she beat Lacey Evans. Maya Yim versus uh, Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler, my God. She is tough. Dude, just, just her getting in the ring and the look in her eyes. Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Um... Oh, uh, what's what else here? Rhea Ripley versus Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai, so tough. Um, almost like a girl version of like Sami Zayn. Similar, you know, with the kicks and everything. Um, Dakota Kai moving on. And Candice LeRae versus Nicole Savoy. Um, didn't pay as much attention to this one, but Candice LeRae is a lot of fun to watch. Um, and getting into the next one, that was episodes five and six, and then the, the quarterfinals, episode seven, um, we had Abby Lath versus Mercedes Martinez. And there's, you know, this, <laughs> these rounds and these episodes is where things really get crazy uh, Mercedes Martinez wins that one Shayna Baszler and this was the first time I mean we, we've seen Shayna Baszler like intense I think this was in this match this was the first time where we've seen her get some good old fashioned heel heat a little surprised we saw that in this tournament and I'm not knocking it I'm just a little surprised because like in the Cruiserweight Classic it was just everyone versus everyone there was no um, there was no heels and faces it was just good old fashioned Cruiserweight wrestling you know and in this, it seems like in a few of these matches, there's a heel and a face. So it's just interesting. Shayna definitely with, a, you know, a lot of crowd support, but also um, showing some true, true healness in this. Um, wow. And... The reversal at the end of that match with Shayna Baszler 
and Candice LeRae. Holy cow. Reversed it in midair, choked her out, and then didn't let go. Hey, that's kind of familiar. Didn't we just see someone else do that? <laughs> Talked about that in my last video. <clears throat> she must like Sexy Star. <laughs> I don't stop that. Um, ha ha. But, um, you know, t made her tap out, then didn't let go, had her pass out, and then as her, her hubby, Johnny Gargano, Johnny Wrestling, is checking on her, Shayna comes over after, you know, celebrating her win, kicks her. It's like, you know, kicking her while she's down. It's like, oh, man, she's bad. She's bad. She's a tough one. Piper Divin versus Tony Storm. Probably my favorite match of this episode. It felt like two old friends who had faced each other a ton of times before and now finally facing each other on a big stage. That's what this match felt like. They were having a lot of fun with it. A lot of um, chain wrestling. And just a, a lot of sportsmanship. You know, and, and like I tweeted out, just a ton of emotion throughout all this. You know, um... And it's, it's, it's hard to put it into words. You have to watch it, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you're watching it. Uh, Tony Storm, moving on in that one. And that was a tough one to watch, or as, as far as, like, who to root for in that one. Because I really like Piper, too. I really do. So I just, I just tried to, you know, just enjoy it for what it's worth. Uh, last match of Episode 7. The quarterfinals, Kari Sane versus Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai looked kind of banged up going into this one. Not sure where it was from, if it was from one of the earlier matches, where it was. But um, her, her knee looked bandaged up or something. So she wasn't 100% going into this. So that was a little, a bit of a bummer watching this match. Still a good match, though. Still a good match. Kari Sane goes into the... Semi-finals. So you had Shayna Baszler versus Mercedes Martinez and Kari Sane versus Tony Storm. I would put either of these two matches in match of the year candidates, especially the Kari Sane Tony Storm one. The and that's not taking anything away from the Shayna Baszler and Mercedes Martinez. That was also a very emotional one, and it was actually the first time we've seen the respect, the handshake out of Shayna Baszler throughout this whole tournament. Because um, <laughs> she goes in, you know, just tough, just kicking the hand away or turning her back or whatever. This particular match was... Uh, student versus teacher because apparently Mercedes Martinez took Shayna Baszler under her wing when she was trying to get into professional wrestling from the MMA and you know it taught her everything that she knows so and, and they they briefly they briefly said that before the match, so that's that was a very interesting thing going into the semifinals, especially in, in you know in this particular showdown. Um, a lot of <laughs> once again, ton of emotion, uh, and a lot of Mercedes Martinez showed how tough she knew Shayna Baszler was, was with the striking and the forearms and everything. With this this match, you want to talk about, you know, JR calling any of these matches a slobber knocker? This match between Baszler and Martinez was a, was a slobber knocker. 
totally. Um, tough one. Very tough one. And Baszler comes out on top. And, wow, just, I'm telling you folks, if you haven't watched it, and you're watching this, go watch it. You, you won't be disappointed. If you want to skip the first few episodes, just because you don't know who half the girls are or whatever, I, I, I can't blame you. That's fine. But do yourself a favor and at least watch the last four. Or the last two. You won't be disappointed, I'm telling you. The last match going into the finals. Uh, Kari Sane versus Tony Storm. Um, man, two of my favorites throughout this whole tournament. Just crazy. The, you really find, you know, you, you look at Kari Sane... And you're like, oh, she's like five foot nothing. And she's, you know, she's she's just a pint and there's not much to her. And then you see her in the ring. And especially in this particular match, you find out how tough she really is. She did a cross body off the top rope to Tony Storm to the outside of the ring. And it's why they call it high risk, folks. She face planted as Tony Storm was trying to catch her. You know, it just the move went wrong. I don't blame either of them. It just went wrong. Okay, you can throw blame if you want, but it was just one of those. Oh, okay, that wasn't supposed to go like that. Um, Kari Saint's face bounced off of. <laughs> the um, steel ramp and the ramp actually left an impression on the side of her face and you saw that throughout the rest of the match it's like somebody gave her a hook yeah <laughs> wasn't a some someone it was a something that ramp left an impression on her face the grate the lines the oh it's like waffle marks folks it was so, in the reports that said that Kari Sane had a concussion, and but she should be ready for the finals, if I had to take a guess, that's where she got the concussion, when her head bounced off of the, the steel ramp, the entrance ramp. Just, wow. Um... And that elbow, jeez. And this one was a little different. She actually went all, like, halfway across the ring, as opposed to, like, right in the corner. She went halfway across the ring. And it still it was flawless. And then, um, uh, Baszler and Sane both received flowers and were presented to the crowd from Trips. Triple H was in there with his wife Stephanie McMahon and Sarah Amato, the head of the women's division and the NXT assistant head coach. And, um, yeah. So, so yeah, that was, that was nice to see, you know. A lot of respect going into the finals. So we're in, as I'm watching this, I'm not realizing. I'm like, okay, when when the heck are the finals? They're not saying nothing. And finally, they said when the finals were in these last two episodes, September 12th in Vegas, 10 p.m. 9 Central on the WWE Network. So basically, right after SmackDown, next Tuesday, is when we're going to get the finals. Now, of course, we're going to get Kari Sane versus Shayna Baszler. But I'm assuming we're going to get um, 
a lot more than that. I'm assuming we're get, going to get some singles matches, possibly out of these women. And if I honestly had to take a guess, we're going to get some kind of face-off against uh, the two sects of horsewomen. That's another thing we saw in the finals here. We saw Ronda Rousey and, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the other two that she was there with in attendance in support of Shayna Baszler. Ronda Rousey and her girls, the face-off in the parking lot against Charlotte Flair, Bailey, and Becky Lynch. And unfortunately, I saw this before I watched these last four episodes because even TMZ had it out there um, but whatever it, it is what it is it's uh, it's an interesting a very interesting part of this because it makes you wonder where they're gonna face off but you gotta think you got to think that somewhere in the finals, there's going to be some kind of face-off. It also really makes you wonder, who's going to win this? It's, it's really hard to call, folks, you know. You could, look, you could look at it like, okay, Asuka's going up to the main roster soon, as soon as she's done being banged up or whatever. The situation is she forfeited her title and I didn't watch this week's NXT episode but I know that's where it happens so are they gonna have Kari Sane win the tournament and then become the the big women's star on on NXT or are they gonna have Shayna Baszler win and have that be the anchor for the big four horse women brawl happening somewhere within the next year. They could do something at Survivor Series that's a few months away. They could do something Mania. They got a bunch of options, you know. So you know, are we actually going to get it also makes you wonder if we're going to get a one-on-one -on -one between uh, Rousey and Charlotte Flair, or are we just going to get the group versus group? You know, four horsewomen versus four horsewomen. Very interesting. But nonetheless, no matter what happens with all that, next Tuesday is sure to be a lot of fun. I cannot wait to see this. And like I said, folks, if you're excited about women's wrestling... Guys, this this is gonna be a lot of fun. I, I've had a lot of fun watching this. It's been one of my favorite tournaments to watch, and I've watched a, a few tournaments this, over the summer. The Cueto Cup on Lucha Underground, this one, the one on uh, Flow Slam. What was that? Shine, the women's, and I can't remember the name of the title. I apologize, but um. The Shine Women's Secondary Title. I apologize, I can't remember the name of it. The Nova, Nova Title, that's what it is. Um, and there's been lots of tournaments. It's like, that's what summer's all about, I guess. Whatever. But, <laughs> nonetheless. So, uh, I want to hear from you. Let me hear from you folks. Um, you know, what did you like or not like about the... Um, the Mayon Classic. Um, did you make a bracket? Did it? Did you have a bracket buster early, like I would have? You know, <laughs> um, you know. Talk to me. Let me let me hear your thoughts on the Mayon Classic. And um, like I said, if, if you're watching this and you haven't watched it, please go go watch it. I'm at least the last four episodes. You will not be sorry. I'm, you know, I, I can tell you that much. Um, these women gave it their all. There's, <laughs> there's no powder puff stuff in here, folks. Seriously. 
So, so that's it for this one. And uh, yeah, you know, don't forget to give the channel a sub, give the vid a like, and uh, share with your friends and your neighbors and the aliens down the block. That's it for this one. Lucha Underground review coming sometime tomorrow night, hopefully. And uh, yeah, we'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching.